Okay, so welcome to our next battle report. Uh, we have rolled on the mission type and we have selected Cloak and Shadows as our uh, mission for today. Um, and we'll just quickly run through our armies and then get to deployment and uh, we'll begin. So I have uh, my, for my HQ in an unbound army, uh, the Inquisitor and Terminator armor with a Demon Hammer and Psy Cannon and I rolled on Divination and uh, got Prescience and Scryer's Gaze for his psychic powers and he rolled on the Warlord traits uh, and he got, got well prepared on the Tactical Objectives uh, Warlord trait table which I rolled for as we'll be using the Tactical Objectives for this mission uh, so yeah, quickly a um, tactical squad of Dark Angels, they've got Plasma Cannon. The only difference here actually is that the Sergeant there has got a Bolt Pistol and not a Plasma Pistol. We tried to go for a sort of Wazzywig for this battle, but there's a few things that we've not quite managed. Um, so Dreadnought there with Assault Cannon, uh, Heavy Flamer and Power Fist. That's one of the other things that's not Wazzywig, he's actually got a Storm Bolt on there. A Veteran squad of Imperial Guard with a Flamer and a Grenade Launcher and the Sergeant there has just got a Bolt Gun. Uh, back here using still the old uh, Grey Knight Codex, this is just before, I think it's a week before the new Codex comes out, but this is so this is still the old rules. Uh, a six man squ purifier squad, they've got two Halberds in there, uh, a Psy Cannon and an Incinerator. And at the back, we have got uh, the Paladin Squad, five man Paladin Squad. We've got an Apothecary, he's at the end there. Uh, Brotherhood Banner, two Paladins with uh, the two the dual swords, and the uh, Paladin at the end has got an Incinerator as well. Actually, using the Deep Strike rules, uh, the purifier at the end there has gone and he's been replaced by another incinerator because I got that wrong. It, it was two incinerators I had in the squad uh, and not a psycho. And so yeah, that's that's him there at the end here. He's just been replaced um, with Grey Knight efficiency. So the front here I've got a 30-man group of Chaos Cultists with just the uh, close combat weapons and auto pistol they come with, led by the Cultist Champion for the shotgun. I don't usually rate the shotgun, it seems like a waste of two points, but I had the two points left over, so why not? Uh, I've got a uh, Hellbrute with a Reaper Auto Cannon and a Combi Bolter. And then on the other side I have another Hellbrute with a Multi Melter, and he's got a Heavy Flamer with him. We've got Khan the Betrayer as the Warlord. He's sort of hiding at the back there, oh there he is. Just hiding behind that hell brute. And then I've got nine Chaos Bikers. The champion is upgraded to have a power maul. He's got that big club in his hand there. And then at the in the front row of the bikers is a Chaos Lord. Uh, that's the only thing where I haven't gone with what you see is what you get because he's equipped with a lightning claw but I've since decided it's well worth paying 10 extra points for a Power Fist, so that is a Power Fist. Uh, they've got the Mark of Nurgle, and the Lord has Blight Grenades, and he's got the Burning Brand Scalathrax. And I think that's all right, but I will put the complete army lists in the video description as well, so you can check there, and that will be the definitive list should you to see that. So yeah, we are all set up. We'll um, get these guys deployed and then show you the deployment. Okay, so here is the uh, table, uh, the battlefield we're fighting on at the moment, and the, in fact, our deployment. So um, I'll just have a quick pan over the, the battlefield. Uh, just talk through the objectives. So we've got objective uh, two there. So we've got one and two is here, and then well, that's number five apparently, uh, and then number four.
four over here. Number six. I think three is over around here. So this is sort of what the battlefield looks like at the moment. Got a lot of terrain around the outside of the table and uh, the ruins on the outside of the table, some bits in the middle, and a scattering of uh, objective markers. More on this side, and I uh, didn't get to pick which side I was on, but Richard went for that side. So I got this side. I chose, I won to roll off the um, who deploys first, and I have deployed first, uh, and will go first as Richard did not steal the initiative. Just quick deployment, my Inquisitor and the Purifiers are on objective one. The tactical squad are in the ruins here. The dreadnought is on objective five, just up right at the front there. And the Imperial Guard squad are back here on objective two in that little trench. The uh, paladins have started in reserve or deep strike reserve. And on this side, which is deployed in this central zone with the bikers just onto the right flank here. The cultists just stretching back to sit on objective six. Uh, the two hell brutes up here in the ruins, along with Khan up there in the front in the ruins as well. So yeah, that's our deployment. We have uh, yet to start turn one, so um, I'll draw some tactical objectives. As this is the cloak and shadows one, I can't tell Richard what my objectives are, but um, we'll have a little list come up with the objectives that we've drawn each turn. Uh, and I will roll to see what these objectives are with the mysterious objectives roll. Okay, so the uh, Imperial Guard squad have just shuffled forward a little bit and they just moved out of this bunker, still within this objective with the mysterious objectives that's nothing of note. Um, the purifiers also fairly indecisively shuffled around a little bit. They were going to perhaps move into the cover but then they didn't so <laughs> they just sort of shuffled still within that one which is also nothing of note. The dreadnought moved a little bit further forward he's still within that one which is a scatter field which is quite useful for him as he's right out in the open there. Um, he's got no cover at all. Well, now he's got a scatter field. The tactical squad really haven't moved at all, they're just still sitting there. The, um, yeah, Rich was just saying the Imperial Guard squad, um, just to save time, also they ran two inches as well. So they, they moved eight inches in total, so they'll just run out of their yeah, cover there. So, yeah, that is my movement turn done. So I'll now go into the psychic phase. So yeah, the psychic phase was interesting. The Inquisitor generated five uh, warp dice with his the two squads here at the moment, him and his purifiers, and I rolled uh, three. Uh, and using all five of the dice, I got three sixes, uh, and I think and I think four out of the five dice I rolled it, actually, it, pa actually passed. You passed so with enough so that I couldn't have denied it, even if I rolled all my dice for sixes. So the warp anyway. is flowing through this man. He, uh, yeah. So perils of the warp, obviously. Um, but I then rolled on the perils of the warp table and rolled a six. So perils schmerils. He passed his leadership test. Didn't take a wound. He is now buffed uh, quite considerably with the power of the warp. He laughs in the face of Perils of the Warp. I feel like he's sent a message to the Ruinous Powers there. He's, he is in control of the Warp. Uh, so yeah, he, he used that to his benefit. I don't think it's actually going to make much difference, but it's quite cool that it happened. Um, at the moment he's quite far away, so the whole armour bane, flesh bane and things isn't going to work. But the 3 plus in one save until the start of his next psychic turn is, is nice. Um, well, I certainly find it intimidating that you've started the game with your constant 6 rolling. That's, that's, that's good four sixes. The first few dice rolls of the game and, and they've got a lot of sixes, so that's good. I like that. And uh, he's got Scryer's Gaze, obviously, which means that I can um, re-roll, I think, reserve rolls and outflank rolls and... Uh, mysterious objective roles and also I think I can what's the deal with the tactical objectives 
if you don't like it, you can draw another I can, one. I can, if, I, if I don't like it, I can just draw another one. So that's great. So yeah, I I think I mentioned as well for his warlord trait, I got to uh, draw an extra tactical objective. So I currently have four at the start of the game. You have uh, three objectives. You you draw and then obviously you draw up to three if you've um, achieved any of them. So yeah, that was a good psychic phase. The psychic phase. Um, one. Yeah, the plasma cannon got hot, unfortunately. He fired over here and targeted the Chaos Lord. Um, we'd roll to scatter and it came over and hit this guy before rolling to see if it got hot, which it did. So that's fine. He passed his armor save. So nothing actually happened. There's a pro tip there, always roll to see if it gets hot first so you don't waste five minutes doing the scatter. Yeah, we, we spent a long time just measuring the scatter and the, and the direction and everything. Yeah, so he missed, unfortunately, well he didn't even fire, his gun just heated. That's not good for turn one, it's eventful. Uh, and the dreadnought here and these two's assault cannon at the cultists. Um, he got three hits. Uh, no, four, no, he didn't. Four hits, three wounds, one cold just died, the, uh, the other saved their cover save from the ruins that they're standing in at the moment. So yeah, that is the first shooting turn done. At the end of my turn one, I uh, just revealed that I had secure objective one, so that is one victory point to me at the end of turn one. Objective six down here is a grav wave generator, and objective number four is a targeting relay. Neither of those are likely to have any effect that I can see in this game. So the cultists have surged forward a little bit, uh, shuffling over as well so that they could identify objective four, and the hell brutes have shuffled forward a bit and the bikers have made a determined burst forward lining up squarely with those purifiers and we will not be having a psychic phase because i don't have a psyker so we will now be going straight into the shooting phase so the Chaos forces have decided to open the festivities by firing off the burning brand of Scalifrax lent to my lord on the bike there by his buddy Khan. And we've got five purifiers in our sights. And since this is quite an important roll, I don't usually believe in rolling dice on camera, I don't think that's interesting. But this time I think it's quite interesting because this is going to be uh, four up kill. Well it's going to be four purifiers on the Inquisitor isn't it? It's other than five purifiers. No, because the purifiers are the closest. Oh I see, yeah, okay. So it's going, yeah, to, it's be going to be four. five yeah, purifiers. Excellent. Four ups, they're dead. So the way I roll, it's like I'm not going to get one. I'm going to call it, I'm going to get one. What do you think I'm going to get? One purifier. I really hope you get one. I really hope you get none. Come on, but, what do you think? But I, I'm going to say if you get two, that would be be okay. good. That would be a good average for you, I'd say. I'm expecting one, I'd be really happy with three. Here it comes. Here it comes. Four ups. Oh! One! There yeah, we go. There we go. That's right then. So there's your twos, your ones, and there's the one dead. Excellent. That's As a, I suspect, that's a great roll. I know how I roll dice. That's a great roll. Good. So one purified dice. That is a lethal weapon. No, it's not. Terrifying. Well, in theory, it's a terrifying weapon, but in reality, with your dice rolls. So we're going to roll great. up the rest of the shooting from the bikes now, and then we'll come back. So the biker is disappointed with the poor performance of the burning brand. Let rip with their twin linked bolt guns and we're able to drop a further purifier. So both of the ones with the halberds are now gone. The dreadnought hellbrute with the reaper auto cannon uh, was able to get two good hits on the purifiers but they passed both their arms saves. And the cultists surged forward a bit more with a run move, 
sort of a reposition more than anything else. And then the hell brute with the multi melter took a shot at his uh, loyalist cousin dead ahead. Uh, got a hit, but because I'm not in half range, the melter needed a four to glance and well, so I had a 50 50 shot, so of course I failed. Uh, so that is the end of Chaos Shooting and indeed Chaos Turn 1. Excellent. So, end of Turn 1 Chaos. I have scored one victory point for holding objective mark of four, and I'm going to discard psychological warfare because I hate, hate, hate that objective so much, and I'm never going to get it against this lineup. I've got some choices to make at the moment. I have rolled to see if the Paladins come on. Uh, I probably would have got them in anyway because of Scryer's gaze for my Inquisitor, but I rolled and they're definitely coming in. So I've got some difficult choices. I do not know where to put them in. I think the first choice I was just saying to Richard is, do I put them behind his army and try and attack things from behind, maybe take some stuff out, some vulnerable dreadnoughts looking the other way. Um, so maybe they can slam in behind, take some stuff out, or do I in fact put them in front of the army and sort of uh, brace for the oncoming charge that's happening? So they could perhaps withstand a lot of a lot of damage coming in at them. Currently, I'm thinking maybe behind be the better option, but then again, I have spread my army quite thinly already, and that it's, it's such a crucial choice. It's a crucial. Forty percent of the Imperial force coming in the form of these paladins. They're going to hit so, so very hard. And uh, listening to Jonathan decide where he was going to put them, I thought it was quite interesting listening to him sum up the pros and cons, so decided we would do that on camera. So yeah, I, um, I'm, not, I'm not sure really. I, they're going to be crucial. They're going to be crucial. I'm thinking probably behind. As I said, I'm spread out thinly already. I've got quite a small force with the like Richard said, the Paladin's taking up quite a large percentage of it. I think I'm probably going to have to go from behind. There's so many threats to deal with as well, so this this Chaos Biker th squad is, is such a big threat, and I think that could just rampage through all my army. You can just cut a bloody sway through this side here. This, this will go down in the annals of the Imperium as the, the turning point of this entire conflict. So choose wisely. Yeah. And, and like I said, the Dreadnoughts are also two big threats. Khan's another massive threat, so there's, there's a lot of things to try and go for. And it is just one squad. Um, it'd be great if they could deep strike in and then attack, but obviously that's not a thing, so... Of course, if it does go badly, the Inquisitor will just have those records expunged, so just go wherever you want. Of course, there'll be no records of this. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll carry on deciding and then we'll get back to you. So yeah, they could could deploy down here. I think that's probably my lo most likely choice. Perhaps they can attack the, the biker squad or the dreadnought. Khan's over there. That objective hasn't been taken yet. I'm a bit worried about the dreadnought over here who's just on his own. And unfortunately, I put the Imperial Guard right over here to get this objective, but they're just they're just not in the fight at all. They are they're well out of it. That was, that was probably a mistake. The... Imperial Guard have sprinted up here. Again, I've just rolled to run because they're not shooting or anything, so they've sprinted up here. Uh, they're closing up towards the enemy, but I think they're going to be mostly out of the fight this battle. They've sprinted up away from that objective. The Dreadnought's not really moved, he's just sort of stood there still. The Purifier squad and the Inquisitor have moved up towards the enemy. And the tactical squad have just stayed where they are. And then in the end, whether this is the right decision, we'll we'll see. But the paladins have deep strike, strike, struck, deep struck uh, behind the bikers. They didn't scatter because I don't tend to with the grey knights, which is good. Uh, line up for some shooting attacks against these war bikers, who are quite tough. Um, I don't, like Richard was saying, I don't have any good AP weapons in this squad incinerator there so we'll see if they actually manage to kill anything but hopefully we will kill 
some of these bikers and reduce the squad size a little bit and maybe provide a little bit of a threat for Richard to think about behind his line. So you have a response to that, but we'll go into turn two shooting. I would just like to weigh in here for the prediction because I think that's fun. People can see whether I'm just an idiot or whether I'm quite good. <laughs> I predict that placing the Terminators there has given me the game. Right. So I'm just going to leave it there. Okay. We'll see how it plays out. Okay. Well, it's not looking good anyway. I think anywhere they went, would have. I think they would have struggled to have swung the game round. So this time the Inquisitor tried to, well, he, he chose to use Prescience, which was cast successfully. I'd rolled uh, two, so with the three units of Psychers I've got at the moment, that was five. Uh, warp charge dice, which I successfully cast prescience on the uh, Inquisitor and his purifier squad. So the uh, plasma cannon is having some major problems with his gun. I don't know what's going on there. He's just been fiddling with it the whole time. He attempted to shoot over there again, but of course it got hot. Uh, the sergeant is shouting at him to you know, sort it out. Uh, it didn't kill him, which is good, but he might as well be dead because he's doing nothing. He's uh, uh, just standing there at the moment. He's the main reason he's that squad's there, really, is, is, is for that plasma cannon. But he has done very little this game so far. A big contradiction to how he fared last game, where he just destroyed more or less this whole whole unit. If you've seen our previous battle report, he was devastating it. But this time, not too much. Uh, using prescience, we had a little bit of a volley from here. The Inquisitor fired his side cannon and managed to kill one of the war bikers. There was a lot of lookout sirs going on. Everyone was diving in front of the uh, Chaos Lord there. He was sort of sitting there as they swarmed around him and it took out one of the bikers from the back there. And the storm bolters fired forward, uh, but they didn't manage to wound. I have yet to fire with the Treadnought and also at the back here the paladins have yet to fire as well so we'll just roll that up and see how it goes. The dreadnought spun about and uh, I thought about shooting some cultists but that was pointless and uh, the dread, the hellbrute I don't think I would have really done anything to either so he actually spun about over here and brought his assault cannon to bear on this chaos squad. As you can see this shooting phase has been quite successful in reducing the numbers of this war bike squad. So the um, assault cannon managed to kill three bikers, which is excellent. They were making a lot of uh, lookout sirs again for the Chaos Lord at the front, who's still alive. Being a venerable dreadnought with the Deathwing vehicle special war, yep. he was re rolling quite a few of his failed rolls, so, so he just yeah. did magnificent. So he, he managed to re roll some ones to hit and to wound, which was brilliant, really. Uh, and then some, yeah, some poor saves, unfortunately, meant that he was. Uh, that's able to cut down three bikers. Uh, yeah, so the Psycan guys, as I said, have already killed one. Uh, we realised that actually it should have been the closest to the character which was doing the lookout uh, uh, saves. Um, the Paladins, the Apothecary, threw a crack grenade, because uh, why not? And he managed to kill a biker. No, he managed to kill the champion. Ah, yeah, he managed to kill the champion. So the champion was hiding securely at the back. The paladins have struck down here. The paladin threw a rock at him and knocked him off his bike. Threw a rock at him. Uh, I was like, oh, well, he can't shoot. But then I remember they've got crack grenades and frag grenades and psych out grenades. They're just armed to the teeth, these guys at the back here. So yeah, he threw, <laughs> threw a crack grenade, killed a champion. The flamer uh, unleashed his incinerator. Not the paladin unleashed his incinerator. And he killed one more, one more biker. So the biker squad has been severely I think they might need to take a leadership test now. They might if he wasn't fearless. Oh, if he wasn't fearless, in which case they, uh, they won't bother about that then. They're, they're fine. Uh, yeah, and then unfortunately the storm bolters didn't, uh, didn't do anything of note. So that's what the paladins have done. Uh, it was really the crack grenade that did the most damage, which was great. Uh, and the dreadnought just unleashed hell over It wasn't there. the crack grenade that did the most damage, the dreadnought. Yeah, well, the dreadnought, yeah. I mean, from this paladin squad, it was really the crack grenade. The that crack was grenade great. did the most hilarious damage. Hilarious damage. The dreadnought, however, yeah, he was a bit of a, bit of a hero and uh, has killed quite a few bikers. So, greatly reduced the bike squad. Uh, whether that's going to help win the game, I, I don't know yet, but we will see.
So just at the end of turn two, I'm going to discard behind enemy lines. I I had debated whether to discard that one anyway, but I thought, seeing how the game goes, the Paladins might have got that one, but they didn't. I, I, I needed to move them close enough to get the incinerator off. Uh, yeah, it was probably unlikely that I was going to get that one, but we've discarded that one anyway, so we'll draw another one the next turn, if, if we're still alive next turn. So, the Hell Brute here with the Reporter Cannon has moved up onto the Paladins, ready to open fire and then charge fearlessly into their midst. The cultists have uh, done well on their difficult terrain roll, so they've done a sort of a surging shuffle towards objective three and just the centre of the board so they can be most useful, go wherever I need them. The Hellbrute did not, the other Hellbrute, the multi multi Hellbrute did not do so well in his difficult terrain, so he just sort of stumbled forward a little bit to have a go again at the other Dreadnought ahead of him. And the bikes have made a nice move up to face down the purifiers. One way or another, I am determined to have that unit wiped out pretty soon with the Warlord in there as well. So the cultists have elected to run forward, just surging out en masse. The multi-melter Hellbrute was able to hit the Loyalist Dreadnought again, but again couldn't actually make that four-up roll, so no damage. Um, the other Hellbrute, he did better, but the Terminators passed their saves. One of them had to take a feel no pain, but they ended up having no damage. So, but the bikes have really achieved their mission very nicely, slaughtering the purifiers. The Burning Brand did much better this time, dropped three of the purifiers. And then the Terminator Inquisitor there was able to pass handful of saves so he didn't take any damage and the melter gun which could have instantly killed him I rolled a one to hit. So if anyone can perhaps help us out a little bit here, we've just got a little uh, situation. So the uh, Hellbrute has charged the Paladins, and as far as we can tell, one of them could throw a crack grenade in Overwatch. I think that's what we've uh, established, but if anyone contradicts us on that uh, and knows the, um, the actual rules, <laughs> then just uh, put a comment in for us and uh, perhaps quote the page number and let us know. Yeah, we can't find anything that says they can't do it, so if there is a rule somewhere that somehow says they can't do it, it would be awesome if someone let us know. So yeah, one guy is going to throw a crack grenade. So with the prescient still in effect, the Inquisitor was able to uh, land one of his Overwatch hits and wound, but uh, the traitor power armour withstood it easily. So we are set up hopefully for a good Inquisitor slaughtering. He's, he's in trouble right there. there. He's done, I think. And then uh, the crack grenade shenanigans. Uh, Jonathan thought he had hit when he rolled a three. Apparently forgot that this is snap firing. So the crack grenade just flew off harmlessly. Got carried away with the, uh, the crack grenade. They perhaps he dropped it on his foot and then had to kick it away quickly. 
But yeah, so the, the Hellbrute has made it into combat uh, with the Paladins. We were talking about this uh, situation over here where the Paladins don't actually have any weapons currently to uh, to hurt the crack grenades. Hellbrute other than the crack grenades. So, yeah, nicely tied up there. They, they didn't activate their hammer hand, which I was hoping he wouldn't do. So, oh yeah. If, if he had done that, they could uh, they could certainly glance him to death. But they didn't do that. So huh. I've got a good turn now, hopefully, to just smash some him with my carvers. Uh The yeah, paladins. Unfortunately, I've, I've got a, a paladin with a thunder a thunder hammer, uh, a nemesis force hammer, ready. Well. Assembled, but he's not painted yet, so he's not in there. He's not in the squad, unfortunately. So we'll be back with the assault results. Yeah, the Hellbrute has charged in um, with his Hammer of Wrath. Didn't actually, that didn't wound, did it? I think the Hammer of Wrath. Um, the Hellbrute swung with his three attacks with his Power Fist and uh, caused three wounds. So he hits three wounds. That would have been enough to instant kill them. Uh, without no feel no pain or anything like yeah, that. Even having two wounds and feel no pain, yeah. that would have instant killed three paladins. Yeah, but, uh, but. the Invun saves were increased by one because of this guy's sword, so he managed to do all three invulnerable saves. Like a ninja or a samurai or something awesome. I... He stood there with his sword somehow deflecting blocked all, all three classes checks. So I, I wasn't sure about those swords to begin with, but, but they are they are useful. I think in this Paladin squad you need a good mixture of weapons. I think well in any Terminator squad from the Grey Knights you need a good mixture of weapons. I've not got the warding stave in this squad actually but I think that's a really good thing to have in as well. But yeah so they have survived that combat. And we got a bit ahead of ourselves actually because they all go at the same time so the rest should have piled in yeah. and they should have struck back already That's but true. we were just so excited so uh, we actually need to finish this assault. Yeah, let's finish that bit. Yeah just to uh, finish up with this little assault here the Grey Knights used their crack grenades the only things that could actually do any damage to the Hellbrute and in fact took one whole point got a glance took one whole point off the Hellbrute so in actual fact uh, did the Grey Knights win this assault? They did. Fearless. Yeah, yeah, but it's good that they actually won. Um, don't know how they're going to get through this uh, assault. They may not, but yeah, they're, they're alive still at the moment. So roaring in furiously, the veterans of the Long War here ploughed into the Inquisitor. Actually took a wound off of him with a hammer of wrath, with a very unlucky armor roll for him, and uh, his armor withheld the flurry of blows from the regular marines there. They got a lot of hits, a lot of wounds, but well, thanks to the veterans of the Long War, they were able to have hatred against him and re-roll, and they got a lot of wounds, but his armor held. So it came down to just the challenge then between the Chaos Lord and the Inquisitor, an epic struggle in which the Lord was able to hit and wound with all four of his Power Fist attacks any one of them meaning instant death for the Inquisitor and only toughness three. The Inquisitor passed three of his invulnerable saves and failed the last one. Instant death. He did however in his death row swing his hammer out and take a wound off of the Lord but not an instant death for him with his toughness six being a Nurgle Lord on a bike. Uh, and he had a 4 plus Invon save to try, but no, I, I rolled a 1, you so you should do. <laughs> yep. But it was still an epic, epic uh, confrontation there, and a fully satisfactory result. Yep, so the Inquisitor's gone, that's in fact then Slay the Warlord and First Blood. So that's two victory points. Well, since we're on that, uh, okay. I'm jumping the gun just a little, but as the viewers would already know, I did draw this this turn. Oh, uh, Kingslayer, okay. So what is that, an extra D3. D3? Oh, yeah. So I'm just going to roll that now. It's been removed here as a casualty. And that's a shame. Well, that's another two victory points. So, wow. so that's wrapped up a four victory points. points from killing that Inquisitor. Wow. Uh, yeah, so, and so, yeah, Richard then gets uh, Secure Objective 3 at the end of this turn, and I uh, get um, 
Recon, so all the mysterious objectives have been revealed now. It's so the end of this turn, I score one. Richard scored five this one, though, so... I have scored five this turn. That's currently now, I think the scores are 6-2 to Chaos. So I've chosen to discard my last objective in hand, the hold the line tactical objective. That's not happening because I'm surging forward, not holding the line at all. So I'm throwing that away, and I forgot to mention that Thanks to killing a character and a duel, the Ruinous Powers chose to reward my Biker Lord with uh, a pointless plus one to his ballistic skill. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they, they probably thought it was a nice gift. It's like an old aunt, she doesn't really know, but she's trying. It's not Chaos Spawnhood anyway, though. It's not Chaos Spawnhood. squad have just turned slightly, um, just bringing their guns to bear on the uh, bikers there. The Imperial Guard have moved up just in front of the Dreadnought here and the Dreadnought's not actually moved. And then the Paladins are locked still in combat over there. So that is the end of my turn three movement. So the Paladins, the Psychic, Phase has got a little less impressive now. I've lost a lot of most of my psychers. There's still one uh, brotherhood of psychers left. I rolled a two, so that was three dice for them to use, and they successfully cast Hammerhand this turn, uh, which Richard could not deny. So they have successfully cast that on themselves. And nobody can deny. Nobody can deny. So yes, the plasma cannon, his weapon actually went off this time. It didn't get hot, but it scattered unfortunately. He, he fired it over here somewhere. Yeah, he, uh, he aimed here. He aimed here. It landed here. Yeah, that went off wild. The rest of his squad actually opened fire with their bolt guns, uh, and the sergeant has a bolt pistol. Uh, I think they managed to hit, but they, did, they didn't cause any damage. Well, they hit a lot. They hit a lot. It was like the pitter patter of tiny yeah, children's feet. They, the, the armor was fine, and the the, the toughness. These are tough, tough war bikers. Uh, war bikers. I do love calling things orc stuff. Orc players orc can't players. help themselves. I just can't help it. I'm just thinking about orcs constantly. It's going through my mind. Orcs, 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 orcs. Uh, anyway, so over here, the um, dreadnought took a risk. Well, it was a bit of a gamble. He opened fire his assault cannon on the uh, hellbrute here, hoping that I could perhaps get some glances with his assault cannon. Um, I think he hit, but he didn't successfully get any glances on the Hellbrute, so he's still fine. The uh, Imperial Guard veterans did a little better actually over here. They, they, they did alright. They did pretty they, well. The first guy up here threw a frag grenade, uh, and it sort of scattered a little bit behind and managed to kill two cultists. That was a Herculean effort from that guy. It went lobbed, really far. Lobbed that grenade miles. Uh, he managed to kill some couple of cultists, I think. The uh, grenade launcher nestled in there, uh, knelt down, obviously aimed his frag grenade and fired it, and it went off on the back here. Uh, may have killed, he got some kills. killed another couple of cultists. Uh, so the las guns all fired, the, the, the sergeant at the back fired his bolt kind of missed completely. The las guns all open fire. Some of them were in rapid fire range. And open fire, but did they? So four cultists are dead. What actually happened was that the frag grenade that was thrown killed two. The frag grenade that was launched from the launcher yeah, only got one. one. And then the las guns. And then the las guns were able to cut down two. Uh, no, sorry, one more. Yeah. They were able to cut down one more uh, because I passed a lot of cover saves yeah. against the last guns. The last guns actually some, did really well. Some cover from this little ridge here. So yeah, there was some good good firing from the Imperial Guard. They only killed four cultists. But that's still but better did, than nothing. I did pass a lot of cover saves, so it could have been a lot worse. Yeah. So the uh, Hellbrute was swinging wildly with his uh, power fist. No hits. No hits. Uh, I didn't manage to get any of the Terminators who, despite the Terminator armor, were obviously dodging and weaving amongst the old roots attacks. They are the best of the best, so they've got some skill, clearly. Uh, saying that, however, uh, they had 17 attacks. Uh, out of that, I think 11 hit, uh, and not a single glance. Not a single glance. 
probably could have killed that Hellbrute if I rolled that well, I would have killed it. Two, two glancing hits. So that's a shame. That's not happened. This assault carries on. Um, he's effectively tied up these paladins. They're not going to be doing anything. Hopefully they won't be killed, but um, they're going to be there the rest of the game, unfortunately. Pacified. So yeah, that's the end of my turn. Uh, yeah, so the end of my turn, I successfully get another victory point for harnessing the warp. So the hammer hand from the paladins over there has given me another victory point. So the score is currently now 6-3 at the end of my turn. I just want to say as well, I'm just going to discard Hungry for Glory at the end of my turn 3, um, as I don't think I'm going to be issuing any challenges currently. sequence and down the run move for the cultists at the same time so I'm not moving them twice. Uh, so they have moved difficult terrain two inches and run four inches for a total of a six inch move. They've made this awesome snake of doom right now. So they are holding an objective still and can pretty much go anywhere I should want them to. Uh, next turn of course if they have they have run. Uh, the Hellbrute with the multi melter has just stomped forward as he's been doing the whole game. He wasn't in difficult terrain this time, so he had a better move. And the bikes have positioned themselves to attack the Dark Angel tactical squad. So the Burning Brand uh, just like the first time I fired it, I rolled mostly ones to wound. Yeah, yeah not so, so good if you if you roll the ones on the uh, the burning ground. And then they passed all their armor saves <laughs> from the bolt guns. So one dead marine from all of that. It's such one. a scary weapon, the uh, the burning brand. But not in my hand. Can't, can't help you if you just roll a lot of ones and twos. Nope. That's poor. So yeah, that was good. I, I thought that that squad was probably going to get wiped out, but no, they're still there. No, nope, they're still there. And then. The Hellbrute firing his multi-melter, now within the melter half range. Um, I rolled a combined total of three yeah. and failed to uh, even glance yet again. Yeah, the uh, Dreadnought there has not been touched. Well, he has been touched, but he is just, his armour is solid. So yeah, here's the end of this. Uh, squad over here. After roaring into the dangerous terrain, uh, I think we got maybe one Hammer of Wrath uh, ineffective against the tactical squad. Uh, my my regular bikers managed to get six hits. Uh, they got a lot of wounds out of that. Oh, in fact, did I kill a biker in with a with a crack grenade, didn't I? Oh yes. We forgot killed about that. I killed, I killed in, Overwatch. in Overwatch. I killed a biker. So again, do tell us in the comments if you can't throw crack grenades in Overwatch, but we can't find that anywhere. <coughs> so he did kill a biker with a crack grenade on Overwatch, and then, as I said, piling in there, uh, didn't do didn't do any kills from Hammer of Wrath, uh, but or not a but, got six six good hits with my regular guys. Yeah. But he passed all of his armor saves. Armor saves so held up. No problem there. It came down to the challenge then between the Chaos Lord and the Tactical Squad Sergeant. Which he accepted. Which he accepted. And the Chaos Lord uh, proceeded to punch every Dark <laughs> Angel in the face. Killing him, kill, killing the whole unit himself single-handedly with his power fist, which was pretty awesome. And in appropriate recognition of his greatness, the Ruinous Powers have now granted him the Shrouded Special Rule on top of his plus one ballistic skill. So that was pretty awesome. And then, uh, following up from that, he used his consolidation move to get within three inches of objective one, which is going to score me something. Uh, but we'll get to that in just a moment, because there was another assault in which my whole brute hit with one of his attacks and then rolled a one. So was completely ineffective yet again, while the Grey Knights were able to get one glancing hit this time, yep. taking the Hellbrute down to a single hull point. It's disappointing still, after 10 hits, still managed to only get one glance on it. Never mind, 
and I am scoring some uh, cards this turn. We've got Recon for having all yeah, yeah. the things uncovered, and I'm getting Supremacy for having two objectives held and twice as many as my opponent who only is holding one. So I'm going to roll a D3 for that. So that's the full three for that, one for Recon, so I've scored four, four. this turn. Wow. That's a lot of points. Imperial Guard here have just shuffled around a little bit, they're still controlling that objective. Uh, they have shuffled forward a little bit, perhaps with a view to burning a few cultists, and they're not going to do too much more now. Uh, unfortunately, the Dreadnought has just moved up towards the Hellbrute. And of course over here the Paladins are still one of Julie locked in combat, so that was a quick movement for my turn four. The Paladins have successfully cast Hammer Hand again on themselves uh, and there was no problems with being denied, so that's great, that's, they've got that off again. Over here as well, so we've started the shooting now and this Dreadnought has unleashed its Assault Cannon again and getting two rending hits has successfully stunned the Hellbrute and he is now down to one whole point left, so that was a really... Stunned and shaken. Well, yeah, stunned and shaken. Shaken and stunned. Uh, so, yeah, that's a Hellbrute shaken, not stirred. Uh, the Hellbrute's down to one whole point, so that's excellent shooting from the Dreadnought. So the... Uh, well, it, it's actually uh, another day now, actually, guys, where we just um, started back up again. It's given me some fresh perspective, actually, on this game, just to have a little bit of a think and come to the conclusion that I probably can't win this one. So this one's just just playing for pride now. I'm you know, just seeing how much damage I can do. The, to that end, the Imperial Guard could have shot against the bikers over there, but they would not have probably done anything. So they had a go at shooting the cultists. Uh, the flamer just killed two. The grenade launcher had a juicy shot over here. Could have potentially got six cultists, but it scattered and hit the ruins, so that was pointless. And then the rapid fire uh, from the last guns killed another three cultists. So that was five. Five cultists. Oh, did the bolt gun guy kill one as well? Yeah, so the, in fact, the sergeant, uh, excuse me, actually killed him, uh, another cultist. So that was six cultists from the Imperial Guard out of the 20 odd cultists that are still around and Khan amongst them there. So that is the end of shooting for turn four. The Dreadnought has successfully charged the Hellbrute, so we will roll up this uh, assault now. The Hellbrute did not get any overwatch fire. And over here we'll roll up this assault as well. So a good result from the assault phase actually, the Dreadnought not taking any wounds at all. Uh, managed to finish off that Hellbrute. Uh, and similarly over here, that was another good result. The Hellbrute here managed to kill one of the Paladins, strike him down with instant death. And his wounds and his armour didn't help him, nor did the Apothecary, so one of the Paladins died. However, they managed to get one more glancing hit on the Dreadnought and it finished him up. They've just consolidated a few inches to reposition themselves for the oncoming charge. Uh, and so yeah, with the uh, end of that turn, I've scored three more objectives for having 
objective 5 for just completely destroying a unit and completely destroying a unit in the assault phase. So that's another 3 victory points for the Imperial side. So the Vikers have roared over towards the Imperial Guard. Uh, gonna destroy them now and Khan's cultist mob have shuffled angrily towards the paladins that are backing up from them. And we will now move into the shooting phase. So the bikes let rip with their uh, bolt guns and more importantly the burning brand of Scalathrax and the Imperial Guard are decimated. While over here the cultists and Khan moving in on the Terminators. They actually did really well in their shooting, but between the armor and the feel no pain, uh, no, no casualties were taken. So we will just go straight into the assault phase now. Okay. So the bikers have made it in with the two lone guardsmen now. Um, their overwatch fire was useless. useless. I'm just going to roll my hammer of rap attacks just right now. Okay. Three plus, they're dead. Oh, only one's dead. Okay. So, one of them remains. And then over here, everybody did really well. A lot of bloodlust, I think, since they haven't actually done anything this game. They are right in there now, in the middle of the paladins. Again, no overwatch fire. I think uh, there was no hits from Oh, me. there was a hit, but then you rolled a one on your storm bolter. Ah, yes, yeah. Uh, yeah, so actually I just rolled for my armour save the uh, guardsman there and he passed, so he uh, survived with his little t-shirt save the Hammer of Wrath attack. So they're still in the fight, but probably not for much longer. Uh, yeah, so here is the end of this uh, result in the assault. Uh, the uh, guardsman is still there, there's one guy who actually has rolled to see uh, their leadership test yet, but the bikers, including a Chaos Lord, uh, have assaulted and failed to kill one of the guardsmen. You did roll a lot of sixes. They, they had their armor saved that saved a couple of wounds and then the Lord uh, flailed around and punched one of the guardsmen with his power fist but missed the other one completely. I, uh, the, the two guardsmen on their part actually managed to wound one of the bikers who did save his um, armor save, but that would have been hilarious. You rolled a lot of sixes. I rolled a lot of sixes. It, it would have been hilarious if the guardsmen had rifle butted one of the war, the uh, chaos bikers. But yeah, that's the, the uh, after the assault, I'll just roll to see if he runs away. So Khan was able to inflict five wounds on the Terminators. Uh, the Apothecary, with his sword, was able to block, was it four of them? Yeah, he, he took one wound. Yeah, it was oh, amazing. Khan's massive assault. But just a flurry of parries. That Apothecary is a hero. He may be a medic, but he knows how to use that sword. It's just fantastic. And then the combined might of the cultists were able to do, in fact, one more wound. That was after the Paladins had, of course, chopped down seven of them. So the, the Paladins are still there, they've, they've withstood the first wave, which is pretty impressive for that assault. And then I've scored one victory point for the assassinate tactical objective. So the sergeant was killed on that guardsman squad. The Dreadnought has just moved up here ready to charge the bikers there and over here in the psychic phase the uh, paladin successfully cast Hammerhand but also periled. Uh, Richard was unable to deny it, the perils are rolled a 2, the feel no pain saved their wound and they all lost banishment as their psychic power that they randomly lost.
So uh, the result of this assault, of this turn, Khan managed to finally bring down the heroic apothecary, slew him, cut him down into pieces, uh, and in his fury, Khan turns on the other two paladins and caused two further wounds, bringing all these paladins now down to one wound. The apothecary lies dead. In response to that, the paladins have struck down eight more cultists, cutting them to pieces with their twin falcons. Uh, the ground is awash with blood, and Khan is really working up a berserk fury. In response, the cultists did not manage to penetrate the Terminator's armour. So three paladins remain and four cultists with Khan amongst them. In this uh, assault, finally the bikers brought down the Imperial Guard. It caused two wounds on uh, the Imperial Guard. He saved one of them, but finally his flak armour gave in. Uh, and after his colossal epic fight against the bikers, he, he was brought down. The Dreadnought, uh, lumbering up behind the other uh, bikers, crushed one of them to death with his power fist, killing the biker. The Chaos Lord then swung in to have his go with his power fist and it looked like it was going to be all over for the Dreadnought. However, after surviving melted gun attacks uh, and anything else they could throw at him, the power fist just bounced harmlessly off the Dreadnought and didn't cause anything at all. So he is still there, he's got all his hold points still, his armour is not even dented. At the end of uh, Imperial turn Five, I have just discarded Secure Objective 2. Yeah, so the Dreadnought smashed another Chaos Biker down, and yet again, with Richard's pretty cursed dice rolling, the Chaos Lord failed. We don't just mean today, we mean always. Uh, always, yeah, always. The Chaos Lord has failed to do any more to the Dreadnought. He's still there, he's untouched. He is just pristine Dreadnought. So hopefully next turn he will just crush the Chaos Lord and that will just be perfect. So Khan activating Gore Child and spinning madly in a circle has just cut down Paladin, Paladin, Paladin and Cultist. And the cultist he killed. In a killed mad, all of them. just spinning flurry whirlwind of oh, death. The paladins are gone. And, 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 and finally, I love seeing Khan cut down his own troops. So he, he did one. And he did one. That's just a, a little bonus at the one. end there, actually. He did one of his own cultists. He actually was, hit another one, but failed to failed wound. To wound so one of them is probably running away with a very sore arm. I suspect right these last three cultists aren't actually going to survive this next few <laughs> minutes, really. Not looking good for them, just <laughs> Khan covered in blood. And there's three little so, cultists standing behind him. That, that, was, that was delicious. Blood for the blood god. And that means blood and guts. Yeah, we've, we've definitely got that. Yeah. <laughs> we've got uh, Witch Hunter. Oh wow, hunt. that's crazy. And then that's it. That's another two victory points. That's uh, bringing you up to... 13 victory points, I think, now? Lots. 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 I don't know, I stopped counting when the blood started flowing. <laughs> 13, I think, to 6. So that's the end of turn 5. We will roll then. Just quickly roll to see if the game carries on or if it ends. It goes on. It goes on. So we'll carry on to turn 6. Uh, yeah, so quick turn for me, no movement. The only thing I've got left on the board is the Dreadnought. Finally, the Chaos Lord managed to glance him, uh, and he unfortunately missed the Chaos Lord. So that's the end of my turn six. So the squad over here with Khan in it has just moved over to obviously secure objective six. Um, uh, and also during this turn in the assault over here, we had uh, the... The Dreadnought was able to do one good hit yeah. on the uh, Chaos Lord, whose four plus invulnerable save kicked, kicked in, kicked so in. no damage taken. And in response, the, uh, the Lord just bounced harmlessly off of the Dreadnought's armor yet again. It's so tough, that Dreadnought was so tough. Uh, I have just rolled and the game in fact continues one more turn 
just to see what happens. So what are the victory points at this So moment? currently I think you're on 13 and I'm on 6. No, because you've just got another one at the end of there, so you'll be on 14 and I'll be on 6. Fantastic. So in the Imperial's last assault phase, the Dreadnought I think has slowed right down now and he did not hit the Chaos Lord. However, Richard rolling a little bit better this time. Finally, all my Finally. guys rolling in one all game So three hits. Three hits, and, and then here's my penetration. So that's, that's pretty much devastated the Dreadnought. Finally, he so punches there it is. straight through. Uh, Board wipe on turn seven. All that hammering, the Dreadnought's armor finally gave in as the last unit for the Imperial side. The Chaos have a Chaos Lord still there. Oh, and it blows up! And it blows up as well. And it blows up. And Khan's left over here. So just for the explosion here of the Dreadnought. So the, uh, it's game over, it's a board wipe. Uh, he did explode, but since the Lord's still got two wounds, not even gonna bother rolling to see if he loses one more wound because he's still alive. So just uh, for anyone who wondered, that's why we didn't do anything with that. Final thoughts. Uh, yeah, so I made some mistakes. Uh, I think the Imperial Guard deployment over here was a gamble for trying to draw some points off that, but that was, even if that had paid off, they might have got one or two points from it. They should have really been further up to begin with. Um, purifiers quite out in the open here. Uh, again, they were trying to secure objectives and they were run down. And I guess the Paladins were deployed right at the back here which kept them quite far out of the way. I mean they, they still did stuff. It's such a survival unit and they've devastated the cultists but ultimately that's not won the game. But they only devastated the cultists because I let them. Yeah. I sort of kept them sectioned off with the Dreadnought until I was ready and then charged them in. So yeah there was the, uh, I do like the Paladins, they're an expensive unit. Um, I like the setup I've got with them. They do need a um, nemesis force hammer in there as well to really give them that extra punch which I'm trying to add to the unit as soon as I get around to painting it. That would really have changed everything if they had just a little bit more way of actually hurting yeah. that dreadnought and getting him out of their way yeah. then they would have ran rampage. And yeah, they would have done a lot better so yeah that needs a little bit of adjustment that unit but such an expensive unit such a devastating hammer blow when the paladins come in they they will drop down somewhere and they will survive they will survive for quite some time. Now I'd like to say, although it looks at the moment like I don't have much left on the board either, since I do have my two HQs left, and they were the focus of my list, really my whole strategy was just to keep my HQs alive and essentially come out just like we are now. When you get to the end part of the game, your opponent doesn't have much left, and I would still have two incredibly powerful characters out there. So really, it all went to plan for me, although I would have liked to have done a little bit better on the dice rolling. It was getting that's a little insane. unfortunate. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you liked this bat rep, please do click the like button so we know that people are liking it. Uh, and at the same time, if you didn't like it, feel free to click the dislike button. Just let us know in the comments uh, what you'd like to see differently because we haven't really figured out exactly what style of bat rep we're doing yet. We're, we're learning. This is only the fourth one we've put up. Um, and, and go ahead and subscribe if you like what you're seeing because there will just be more and more of it hopefully always improving. Again, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. This is your way of telling me something.